Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Carpenter, and I'd like to talk with you for a few minutes about um, a procedure that more and more of our patients are coming in asking us about, and more and more of the health-oriented doctors that we work with that are trying to help their patients are asking us to perform on their patients, and that is um, a concept of cavitation lesion. And cavitations are, have been described differently for the last hundred years. And typically they'll talk about um, an ischemia or a myelitis or a necrosis. These are all different descriptive terms used to describe the same type of process. Necrosis actually means death and myelitis means infection related to bacteria. So sometimes they'll differentiate cavitations that way. But for our purposes and understanding what they are and how we feel about them, um, it's, they're all type kind of the same. In my little diagram here, I've kind of drawn a, a mandible or, ha or, or a quarter of a mandible. Uh, the front of the mouth would be out here and the ear would be back up here. And this is uh, the patient's lower second premolar, first molar, second molar. And this used to be where the wisdom teeth sat. And I purposefully use this diagram because more than any other tooth in the mouth, the wisdom tooth is the one that we all have extracted. I also drew this little diagram so that the second molar that would sit in front of where the wisdom tooth used to be shows that it has a root canal. If you were able to watch the video that we did on root canal therapy, uh, you would remember and, and understand that when we look at bacteria levels in teeth, we see the highest levels of bacteria out in the bone, just outside of a root canal. And we see very, very, very high levels of bacteria in the ligament that separates the root of the tooth from the bone. And this, in essence, is the problems with cavitation. A cavitation lesion can be caused any time that we lose blood supply to bone. Bone is just like um, any other living tissue. It's got to have nourishment. It's got to have oxygen in order to live. So, the proper way to extract a tooth is to completely remove all of the ligament that stays down in the bone. And I don't know if I mentioned that on my root canal video, but I talked about removing the ligament, and I talked about removing some of the bone outside of the ligament too because the bacteria levels are so high. But anymore, you know, time is money in the medical field, and surgeons and, and good doctors uh, can take teeth out, four wisdom teeth, in 10-15 minutes. And, um, but they're very, very, very rarely ever taking the time to go in and clean all the ligament that still resides inside the bone. So in this situation, what I'm showing is the place where the ligament used to be. And I'm doing it in green because it's, it's meant to uh, represent infection. So this wisdom tooth that used to sit in this area was pulled and the ligament was left down in the bone. What happens is the bone on this side of the ligament can't get on this side of the ligament. It's like a wall. Bone can build in our bodies and it builds like this. One cell next to it, next to it, next to it. Builds one cell at a time. So when you have a ligament that's left down in that area, bone cannot fill in that space that the root of the tooth used to house. And what happens is we get bone grow over the top of the lesion so that from the outside or the inside of the mouth there's pink gum tissue here and everything looks like it's healed. In reality what we have with cavitation osteonecrosis is that we have an area left inside the jawbone that continues to house all of the anaerobic bacteria and toxins that resided in the tooth or the root canal. I put this root canal adjacent to this cavitation because as a reminder for me to be able to tell people what we find surgically, what we find clinically. Root canals are very infected teeth and what happens is the infection associated with root canals starts to cause high acid levels in the bone, starts to cause the bone to decompose. And what happens is we routinely find that when we have a root canal on a second molar that sits next to a third molar, 
we are able to follow the infection from this tooth through the bone all the way back to this cavern. And it's important for, for you as the patient to understand, bone is not like um, a, a block of concrete. It's porous and there's medullary spaces. And it's very easy for bacteria and infection to travel through bone. We are interested at Transcendental Health in these cavitations, not because we love to cut you know, and, and do surgery. We're interested in them because they house very, very, very toxic bacteria. I know this to be true because I've done the pathology research myself. We routinely send in samples of blood to Dental DNA in Colorado to examine the contents of these cavitations. What we find is almost indescribable. Um, we find incredibly high levels of very toxic anaerobes. We find bacteria that we can't find any place else hardly on the planet. We find fungus, we find viruses, we find pieces of metals. It's almost like the body in its wisdom looks at these low blood supply, dead bone areas as places where it can store unhealthy things. So the, the toxicity associated with cavitations is very, very, very high. And um, we believe that in order for a patient to try to achieve and maintain optimal health, um, cavitation lesions need to be identified and treated. The purpose in trying to treat a cavitation is to get this area to refill in with bone. And again, there's different ways that people will try to approach this. We support protocols of the people in our time who've had the best results. We follow the Huggins protocol when it comes to cavitation surgery. With our surgery, basically what we're doing is we are accessing the bone through the gum tissue very close to where this cavitation lesion is. And then it doesn't take a whole lot of work after that. You can tell when you look at the bone or if you barely put pressure on the bone the bone caves in. It's like uh, Indiana Jones or something. You know, you're looking for a secret room and you just open a little door and there's a massive vault. That's what it's like when you see these cavitations. I've seen cavitations that were as big as my thumb. And you don't imagine being able to look inside a, a jaw that's filled with bone everywhere and finding a big space where there's no blood supply. There's, no, there's nothing happening. It's just like an empty space of necrotic tissue. So. We access these areas and we go in and we surgically curette or debride out the dead bone. As you do that, you start to get past where the infection is back into healthy bone. And then you see the body start to bleed into the area. And it's a wonderful thing. And just like we do when we remove a root canal procedure, we sit and we observe and we honor and we get behind the body's wisdom in this process. We open that area and it bleeds and the body purges and the body purges and then when the body decides that the purging is stopped, it starts to clot. And that's how we try to support the body. We suture these things up so nothing about that cavitation is exposed to the oral cavity. And um, we uh, support people nutritionally and um, therapeutically through the process of healing.